guys want to know what John Jones did a really good job of? When John Jones left the belt, 205 pound belt, he puts it aside, he's going to go up to heavyweight. It was a very good story. And the story was I have shown my dominance. So now I'm going to unlevel the playing field. I am going to spot my opponent from Jump Street and Advantage, which is size. I am not a great big heavyweight. We have great big heavyweights. It's a reason we weigh them in. At my weight class, if there was three pounds of separation in the fight, what had happened? Right? John Jones had never had a fight where there was three pounds of uh, separation. There legally would be able to, at 205 pounds, he could have an opponent that weighed in at 202 or 200 or 199. D don't think that I don't understand these things. I'm telling you now, he never had three pound advantage. He never fought an opponent that did weigh in at 202 or 199. They all weighed in at 205 or 206. Relevance being, story makes sense. Okay, fine. Well, when John started down that journey, he brought us in on it. Specifically through Instagram, but he would bring us in on it. I could think of workouts that I saw him in. I can even remember some of the gyms, some of these dirty old school gyms with the dirty plates, not the, all the fancy stuff. Sometimes he was using chains or white chalk all over the place. I like it. I'm into that kind of thing. You don't have to be. I'm just sharing for you. For me, it was part of the story. For me, it was part of the humbling process that John was going through to get with those coaches and to try to learn that world of size. And John had a, what I believe to be, arbitrary number in his mind. 240 pounds. But I believe that was, I believe he one day just grabbed that number. So, okay, great. You got to have some kind of a number. You got to have some kind of a goal. He starts after, but now we know. So now we're along the journey. My only point, and I think those things are fun. You've, you, you've seen so many compelling documentaries, magazines, books, how-tos on weight loss. So this was one with a well-known person who had a very unique purpose. And they were going the other way. They were trying to gain weight. Story was great. But either way, it was a story that he brought us on. You want to know what I don't know? about John? I don't know about this injury. Pure coincidence, John had, somebody was filming the very workout, the very position when he got hurt. Great big guy, goes in for a double leg, to tear to the pack. So we have that. And what I share with you is, I don't know how bad this is. I don't know when he's coming back. I don't know what to expect at all, and I wish I did. I'm looking at 300 coming up. And card coming out of Saudi Arabia. Sergey Pavlich got assigned to that card. If you guys know about that fight with Volkov, maybe it's going to happen, maybe it's not. Could be some confusion. Either way, Sergey Pavlich, at least in theory, is assigned to a card. And that's a big deal. Because Tom Aspinall, who becomes champion, is not only not getting a fight, it wasn't rumored to be getting a fight. He wasn't picking a fight. There wasn't really even a discussion. There was kind of more of a confusion. And within that confusion, and probably the largest part, is when will John be back so that we can then come up with a date when he can be in there with Stipe if it's a reasonable date. Perhaps Tom Aspinall never finds an opponent and just hangs out and waits. This is just all part of it. It's all part of the story. And then when you start to realize Tom's not being talked to, he's not being looked at. As a matter of fact, neither is the guy that he beat in Sergey Pavlich. So we can't really scream fire or say there's anything amiss here until Sergey gets matched up, right? Like, like if the guy that lost can go out and get work, then the argument and the urgency for the guy that won to go out and get work Changes just a little bit. And, you know, injuries are a funny thing. They really are. They, re they really are a funny thing because you have the psychological side to it that nobody knows. Nobody is above that. It's just a part of it. I grew up wrestling practice. Bunch of tough guys. Bunch of tough guys. Wrestling practice brings in tough guys. It was so hot in the room. Oh, my goodness. 
Roy Pittman would be running practice. It'd be so hot in there that parents, had, all they had to do was watch. They would have to leave the room. They couldn't even watch. It was so hot. There. We're down there training for two hours. Tough guys. That's my only point. A bunch of tough guys. But without fail, if 30 guys started practice, 30 guys did not finish practice. Without fail. I went to practice every single day but Christmas. And yes, that includes Christmas Eve. Every single day but Christmas for nine years. There wasn't a single practice where however many started, finished. And when you'd have some of those harder practices, then you'd have a lot more injuries. The hotter it was in there and the more work that we did, wouldn't you know, there was more guys that had to go out and without fail. When you had those days of this group of kids, right? And you're done wrestling the second you say you are. The moment you say, I'm hurt, I can't, you are done. There is no coach that is going, ah, you got to push your way through it. Nope, doesn't work that way. But at the end of practice, Coach Pittman would play a game. King of the Mat was a big one, if you guys know the rules to that. But we would look forward to King of the Mat. So he would play it. And every time, without fail, everyone in the room played the game. And without fail, after practice, when Coach is giving a quick talk before we go, he would point out the fact that he only played the game to see who was actually hurt. And the guys that were actually hurt, claiming they were hurt, all of them would get up and they, they weren't hurt when it was time to play the game. And because I was there so often, I knew this drill, I, I recognized it, I could, I could finish his thoughts, but I remember these things. And when I became a coach, I will do the same thing. The guy, he can't go on. He just can't do it. He's hurt, he's out, he's got the, oh, he liked, liked to be there with his teammates, but he just can't do it. And then all of a sudden, when it's the motivation changes, Injury goes away. So, because we, we've seen a little bit of this playing out right in front of us. The Prohaska shoulder injury is done. I mean, th there is such a mystery within that. But the audience simply was not interested enough. They just simply were not interested in Prohaska and the shoulder and the stripping versus the relinquishment. I mean, th that, that whole thing, it just wasn't any... And it's long gone and it's behind us. But if you wanted to sit back as somebody that was there and observed it, we have never put paid to that receipt. Never has that been stamp paid. That is an open file. Prohaska was hurt so bad. It was, and I quote, the worst injury they had ever seen to a shoulder. Stripped him. And within one month, he was on Instagram saying, I'm ready to fight. And pretty soon he got back in there and fought and there was never an explanation given. And that's okay. You can mix diagnose and you can also have miracles. You can have good treatment. There's no egg on anybody's face. I'm sharing for you. When you bring these things public, instead of keeping them private, where they should be, when you bring them public, it does become a level of interest. Jamal Hill played a pickup basketball game during International Fight Weekend as part of a spoof, part of a fun, let's go. I never really understood that, quite frankly, because the pickup basketball game where, where Daniel Cormier and Jamal Hill and I could keep going, a bunch of guys that you would find very interesting are playing basketball, which is something you would never consider. That is interesting. I never even knew it happened. I was in Las Vegas. I never even knew it happened until Jamal was hurt and it was aired on UFC Fight Pass. That's weird. If you can get a bunch of guys that cost a whole bunch of money to get on camera to do something for free just because you asked them to do it and you're going to film it and you're going to commercially do it, but you didn't tell anybody. I mean, not for nothing. I'm going down a different road. That is weird. Whoever organized that, got that approved, got everybody there, got the jersey, got them out there, but failed to let anyone know it was going to happen. I mean, that, that's a completely separate conversation. What I'm trying to share for you, he ends up getting hurt there. He gives his belt back. And he was not coming back. There was, I mean, you know, now he was going to come back late, later this year and everybody was moving on. All of a sudden, man, we're in a jam. Gets one phone call. Do you want to fight? Yeah. And that's interesting. That's interesting. Had he been cleared, had this been a matter of time, were we in the process of finding fights? 
was secretly, he's been back since about Christmas and kind of kept it down, you know, keep your weight off it, but do most of the workouts. Was it one of these situations? Was he on the bench completely because he was injured because somebody told him you can't return for a year and he still had five months left on the clock, right? I mean, that's where that psychological side comes in. Those guys that were hurt at the wrestling practice, story I told you when I was growing up, were not faking. By the way, you probably came to the conclusion that I was implying they were. They weren't. They legit, They thought they were hurt. They thought they could not go on. They really thought that. And when it was a game and it was more fun, it was a little, I, I think I can do that. And you know what? I'm going to give it a try. They learned something there. They weren't being outed. They learned something. There's a psychological side to these illness. And I, I, I'm only bringing it to, that's pretty interesting. From the worst injury we've ever had, I'm back to Prohaska, to Bredry in one month. In one month, according to him, to Jamal is not going to fight. To closer to 2025. Hey, we need you and we got an opportunity here. I'm in. That's interesting. And I tie those in with John. I mean, right? Like if, like if anyone can do it, can we at least admit, right? If it can be done by a human and it's athletic and it's, it's a physical problem, if it can be done by anyone, can we at least admit then, then John could do it? Like, is there, I don't know, if there, is there any physical thing that a human can do, but, but that he can't? It's, it's one of those spots, and he wouldn't know. He'd probably be a little confused, too. But if you called him and asked him, do you want this date against this opponent, you might be surprised at the answer you get. You might be surprised that all of a sudden you're feeling a little bit, all of a sudden, yeah, there is a way. Yes, I have learned enough about my body and what I can do to prepare and train and even compete on it. I mean, I don't think there's a situation where you're going to convince me that Chris Weidman all of a sudden is ready to go. Like, yeah, you're not really ever ready to go, but sometimes it's your turn. I used to get asked that on fight night all the time. Are you ready? Are you ready? That was just the thing people would ask you. Are you ready? Are you ready? It could be a stranger. It could be, it, it could be your, your own mother. That's just, it's just what they say on fight day. Are you ready? I am never ready. But I'm never going to be ready. At some point, my music's going to hit those speakers and it's my turn. And I only share that because I'm curious. John did such a good job of bringing us along the weight gain journey. Whether he meant to or not, it was very fun. It's fun to see that. And I would like to be on the rehab journey. I have the foggiest idea where that's at or what he's able to do activity-wise. I know when I see him, he looks pretty good. Does not look like a guy that's sitting around. I like some of those answers. For me, it's fun.